Ignition sequence has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. So when the explosion occurred, I thought that he was doing it all over again until I looked up at him and I could see from his expression he had no idea what was going on. Mm, that's not good. Yes? How many days did it take you to get back to Earth? How many days to get back to Earth once they had a problem? Just four days. Were you ever really nervous? Were you ever really nervous? Oh, apprehensive, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How tall was the Apollo 13? How tall is the Apollo 13? What, the module? Yeah. Um, the lunar module is what, 17 feet? Uh, not very tall. No, I don't really know. It's, yeah. not, it's not something we have to know. <laughs> I People ask me how many gallons in the gas tank, and I always tell them I just hoped it was full. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you could go back and do the mission again, and you had the same exact problem, what extra items would you request NASA to bring? And if you had the same exact problem, what solution would you come up with? In other words, if you could do it all over again, would you ask NASA <laughs> to send different, more equipment? We would have probably replaced the uh, oxygen tank. <laughs> <laughs> Better oxygen tank. I knew that was coming. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Lovell, were you, ang were you uh, annoyed when you got back and found out, found out that they had shut off your broadcast? Were you annoyed when you got back and found out they shut off your broadcast? No, uh, I didn't know they shut it off. Neither, <laughs> neither Fred or I, we kept through talking on it, and all of a sudden they... They, they called up and said, uh, we have a lot of work to do down here, and so can you cut it short? So I said, yeah. Doesn't sound like he's too mad. <laughs> Who haven't I picked on yet? Or I asked yet? Okay. Yes? How do you fall asleep in space? How do you sleep in space when it's so exciting? <laughs> I, I don't think that, that part is not different than here. Now, the first uh, night out, and I have that problem, the, like the first night here, I'm in a different bed in a hotel or something. Uh, you normally have a little, I had a little trouble anyway, sleeping the first night. And, uh, but after that, uh, sleeping's great because uh, you're in zero G, so you have no pressure points. Uh, in our case, though, uh, it, the problem then became uh, after the explosion and we powered down, it got very cold. Cold and damp. Water was everywhere inside the vehicle on the walls and Ooh, plumbing. Cold and wet. Oh, yes? Before you took off, did you think it was possible that the that half of it would explode? 
Before you took off, did you think there was a chance it could explode? I didn't think there'd be a chance. I mean, this was the third flight, uh, and, uh, third landing flight, and they've all been successful. We hadn't had any real big problems, so why okay. should this have a problem? Yes. All right, my question is, I'm just going to kind of keep it simple here. What is it like to just see space, just like from that view that you guys were at? What was it like just to, he's trying to imagine what it's like to be in space. If you could just tell him what your feelings were being out there. They're trying to... Well, uh, uh, because I think I was on Apollo 8, which didn't have an explosion, so we had a little bit more time looking out. Uh, it, it is so quite, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess educational. Really educational, because uh, I finally saw the Earth as it really was when I was around the moon. I saw that it was a little blue and white ball, much like a Christmas tree ornament from an absolutely black sky. That little ball is uh, rotating around uh, a normal star, uh, and that star, the sun, is only part of a uh, uh, of the outer edge of a galaxy. And as I looked at the uh, Earth, you know, I realized uh, uh, how fortunate we all are to be here, uh, because uh, you are living on a body that has the proper mass to contain the water of the atmosphere and you're living on a body that is just at the proper distance from the sun, not too far out to be too cold, not too far in to be too warm, and the sun's energy then of course life to evolve. So uh, boys and girls, thank your lucky stars that you're here. Oh, that's because there's an old saying, you know, I hope to go to heaven when I die. You went to heaven when you were born. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm going to quote that. We, I don't want this to end, but I was just told by my boss, I only one more question, and this young lady here has had her hand up so much, and I haven't picked on her, so what's your question? Um, how did it feel like when you knew that you might die? How did it feel when you knew you might die? I, I, I never felt I was yeah. going to die. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, we got us sort of, with Gene's uh, troops instructions, got us on a path that got get us around the moon. Uh, Jim had asked me to calc do some calculations on consumables, uh, water, electric power, oxygen, etc. And uh, my rough arithmetic numbers, I still keep that card, incidentally, to, and use it with uh, children like you to tell you you should pay attention to arithmetic. Where I did this grocery store arithmetic and computed that we we would be all right to get to the entry point. Uh, we ran out of water a little time ahead of time, but not by five hours. So I figured we uh, had a shot to get back to entry, even that early in the mission. So I wasn't uh, wasn't worried about uh, getting back. That's good. Study your math. I'm sorry to I'm sorry to. Uh wrap this time up. Uh, it's it's important that we stay on our schedule and we have an exciting night ahead. We wanted to have a little celebration with you all in a special way. Um, this today happens to be the birthday of one of our honorees tonight. And may I introduce Virginia Swigert too. Jack, Jack's sister uh, Virginia is here to be honored for us. So uh, we're, we're glad she's here too. But tonight... Hayes' birthday, and we're going to bring in a birthday cake and have oh, all you guys so help you us sing dope, happy brother. birthday. <laughs> you don't have to eat it now, but I have one other announcement. It's kind of exciting, actually. There's a young man here whose birthday it is today also, and guess how old he is? Thirteen, wow. right? His name is Tanner Packard, and I want Tanner to come up and help uh, Fred blow the candle, okay? <laughs> there are 13 candles, so before we blow the candles out, nice let's time. all uh, oh, sing happy birthday to Fred and to Tanner, okay? One, two, three. Happy birthday!